We are in 89. This a touchline rant. A touchline rant 89. We're going to look back. Well, we're going to look back and forward at the same time. Liverpool How can you do Spurs that? Spurs in the Champions League final. We're going to look at what that result means to both teams going forward. Mo Salah. The effect that that man has actually had, we've since found, you know, we found out this week. Nations League and the Women's World Cup, and then we're gonna have a bit of feedback. We're gonna do introduce a new seg Surrounded. speculation. Speculation. That we're gonna talk transfer gossip there. We're, we're also gonna talk a bit of mascots. <laughs> talk about football never stopping oh, and yeah. social media. Yeah. Huge, felt huge, felt huge watching that final with two British to like, like size in it. We made the occasion even bigger by hosting a live, a live watch party of the event. Where do they go from here? Who? Let's say Liverpool now. Okay. Uh, my theory on on occasions like this, it feels usually when a team under these circumstances win the Champions League, it feels like the ending of something. But, but this feels but, like the beginning. But because it feels like the beginning for of Liverpool. the rich woven tapestry that is yeah. Liverpool. Six. They're going to be able. They've got a very very good squad that can compete against any other squad in the world, and they've done it on a massive platform. They had that ridiculous Premier League. Like Liverpool have never been a more attractive option to join right now. For Spurs, however, do you know what this shows me? They need a rest. That squad, man. My ears are bleeding. You say this too much. It's they need <clears> a <throat> break. We've since found out about Liverpool and Benfica B. Preparation for a game yeah. like this in the weeks in advance. Well, they found something out. They found out that Benfica B team mm. played very similar to the way Spurs play. Uh, so they analysed, analysed, and analysed, and worked on worked on scenarios all the time. We posted a link on on they our, did. On they, our they, they played them as well. Like they they, they had did a, play them. They fully. had a game. They had a game against Benfica B in practice. It just shows what goes into it. Yeah, what, and it what was, goes into it. Look, and my favourite bit of the rest is just be, the behind the scenes and the stories told and the celebrations, which were raucous. <laughs> backup to those players almost like a Lucas Moura you know when he came in that was a very high calibre Sissoko Sissoko he was a, that's a, he had a very good international tournament he did Sissoko I suppose got him but I can I think that nothing what's that mediocre. DVD stat that you like throwing out at, at, at cocktail well, no parties one's, no one's dribbled the ball past VVD this season Let, can you say that again no one has dribbled the ball past VVD this season. No one. That's ridiculous. That's one hell of a stat. Liverpool are right now, I reckon, the hottest prospect in world football for a player wanting to go to another club. Yeah. And I think Spurs are a very unattractive option. And I think they don't spend a lot of money and it's known that they don't spend a lot on wages. I think, and until Juventus decide on who their next manager will be, there's a hell of a lot of rumours that it's that they want Pochettino. Hang on, are you saying we need to start Poch Watch again? So we are restarting, we're very excited, we're restarting Poch Watch. Because we were going to tweet constantly about his whereabouts. Right. So it's sort of like we it's stalk him on. from afar. Yeah. Right, right. We long lens him. Yeah, we're long lensing him. <laughs> But we've also found out that he um, lowers the rate of hate crime against Muslims in the Merseyside area. It's that. huge. And that is that is it's what happens. Also what happens when social media is done correctly. Because it is, should be used to make people better citizens first and consumers second. In my yeah. opinion, that's what it should be. <laughs> My favourite international tournament is back. 
The Nations League. I fell in love with the Nations League in Ikea when Mitch so eloquently described it to us. And Mitch can just do that, that, though. After that, some of the results, man, were just mad. Like, some of the results Switzerland got. were mad. What I love about the Nations League is how it pits teams against each other mm. that are closely ranked. So it actually shows that when, that when those rankings are actually quite correct, because all those teams which are like, you know, they're minnows and stuff like that, you know, like, not minnows as such, but say someone like Azerbaijan. What am fish for? Or Poland or something like that. They're never going to win anything on a major level. But what this did was put them as the elite in their groups. What about Greece? Yeah, well, look, it's very rare that it happens. We all know the big international superpowers of world football, you know? And they change a few times, but they're all the same, really. It's those outer sides that will benefit from this. You know, the Armenias and the Albanias and stuff like that. The, all the nations are benefiting from this tournament. It's something the World Cup and the Euros. Is it bringing all nations do. together? It is. Are they, is it uniting them it through is football? Uni it is uniting nations because what it's doing is allowing, you know, like it c they're allowing teams that wouldn't usually get into the tournaments. Mm. A window, a, a chance to get in. So, like the Nations League now, you know, there's ways of you qualifying directly for the Euros through the mm. Nations League, and teams have, and they're just, you know, they're enjoying it. Like um, Scotland have guaranteed themselves a playoff place. Yeah. So Scotland have guaranteed themselves a playoff place in the Euros. That's huge. Scotland would struggle to qualify for these tournaments, but now they're a game. They're guaranteed to be a game away. I think it takes it's me massive. It takes me a game and a little bit of build up and to watch football to actually get into the Nations League because it just seems like a bit of a bit of a come down right now. It does, <coughs> but I genuinely like think a football people, hangover. People, if are, you will, yeah, people are underestimating the Nations League. They're forgetting how good it was. The problem is now is that these players are obviously come right to the end of their seasons. They are their most tired they will be all year it's June and these players are still playing football it's constant so, it's never ending it's, it's always um, someone else yeah, always someone else these players played at the World Cup as well let's not forget last summer but it is their job so yeah it's just how much football is there when you consider that length of time the world a full season if, a World Cup a yeah. full season Euros nation also League. everyone forgets that it also has a, a fundamental effect on like the home life how would you how would you feel if you're constantly away like, yeah. say I'm a good footballer, you're my wife, and you're like, okay, need to need to get on with stuff. I, like, I can't. Yeah. I can't do anything. Because I've got this football, got to earn a, earn a living. How would you feel being my wife? I wouldn't be best pleased. There is a World Cup. It's the eighth edition, you're absolutely right, of the, the Women's, Women's World, World Cup. Cup yeah. It, it, uh, yeah, it kicks off very soon. Uh, Friday. France. Friday kicks yeah, off. Yeah, but like in a world where it's like, don't age the show. It's just... It kicks off. Kicks, it's, it's, it's happening. It's happened. Okay. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> yeah. Covered all the bases there when this gets released. Just whenever you listen so to France this, it's like South Korea. happening, happening. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <it> happened. <laughs> There's two key fundamentals about that. Okay. That's it. Um, so France played South Korea in the first of the group matches. That'll yeah. be good, wouldn't it? Who's the favourite? Um, I think Japan. Japan are up there, definitely. There go. Look, Japan there and go. the USA have played, I believe, the last two finals. Uh, and they've won mm. one of them each. So the USA have definitely won the most amount of World Cups mm. on the women's game. You know, this massive in America. You know, they are the biggest and best side in women's football. Because they get paid more than the men in North America. You know, they are huge that is now seeping across like Leon ladies I don't like the word seep seeping why did Leon you go with seep I went with seep I thought seep I shot with uh, seep uh, it's Leon ladies as we've talked about in previous weeks has done a phenomenal job and it job. is in Leon. yeah uh, it is in Leon. so I think that personally I think USA will win it We're a couple of years away from it being the European Super League. And what will happen is Man United, Manchester City, 
and um, United first. They would definitely. They'd one hundred percent if they'd picked the European Super League, the first English club, because they want to make money. The first English club that they pick is Man United, because no one makes more money than Man United in England. Nobody. We finish sixth. We'll still make more money than fucking Liverpool, and they won the Champions League. Yeah. We make a ridiculous amount of money. Like it's ludicrous how much money the club makes, and so they'll United will go with UEFA. And what you'll see is Man United, Man City, and probably Liverpool will leave the Premier League, and they'll go and play in the European Super League. Juventus will leave Italy, and potentially um, a club like Roma. You're talking like. Like, back to the future sort of stuff here. Yeah. I imagine what, like Biff Tanner's like no, dom- I genuinely think force. what is happening is that what's happening to the future Europe, of football? Well, that's what Juventus and uh, elite uh, what's his fucking and Yelly and Yelly, the owner of Liber- of Juventus, yeah, is currently currently on behalf of a lot of clubs uh, in negotiations with UEFA to o- to open a European Super League from twenty twenty five. Leave their leagues. And they form a <coughs> European Super League, and it's where's the, where would the fun be in that? Every year, the winner of their respective league, so then the Premier League without those three teams in it, yeah, because yeah? those would initial they teams get can't down. get relegated. No, those initial teams will never be able to get relegated from the European Super League. So they pick United, City, Liverpool. What's happening? What will happen is the person who wins the Premier League. So say the fourth best side in the Premier League so say Chelsea yeah. win the Premier League without these three sides in it then all the winners of the league would have to play each other so say Chelsea win the Premier League without all those teams and Inter win Serie A without all those teams and all these are, you know so without Atletico Real and Barca you know say Valencia win the league all the winners of every league across Europe would play each other in a knockout tournament and the winner of that would then join the European Super League for the next season. Mm. And if they didn't get relegated, then they'd do it all again the next year. So one by one, they'd start section it, take sacking out other teams. So that's in leagues. essence the biggest possible thing that could ever... He's negotiating happening now. And yeah, he's discussing... You can't really think that's going to go ahead though. And yeah, he's It'd literally in, in negotiations with UEFA to do it. He's literally doing it. He's been in it for about six months. That would make it. That's what he's pushing for in Europe. Goliath. Woodward's involved in it. Oh, he's, um, your, he's your mate, your bestie. He could go to Spain, to bar. Like he's, he's, you know, he could go to Atletico. Atletico are getting rid of a lot of players at the minute, so they do need him, especially Greece. So would you, would you take Dubai? There's another bit of Spain. United. Dybala, well, look, Dybala ooh, at United, ooh. no. You need a big name, don't you? Yeah, I know, that's what's worrying, because we don't need a big name. What we need is big signings, and that's the difference. We don't need a big name. We've had big name players. It hasn't worked at United. All they need is big, big signings. So you it need sounds, to be signing... Sounds big. You know, you need to be signing, you know, Mateus De Ligt or something now. They won't, because they'll ruin him, but I can't get into a United trend. <laughs> Where is Anton Griezmann going to end up? Where's he going to? Where's he going? Where's he going? Up? Barcelona apparently. PSG? No, Barcelona apparently. Anton Griezmann. He's going. Oh yeah, that would be obviously yeah. Obviously that would be his obviously. So he's going to Barcelona. Uh, Mbappe. Which then Mbappe. Where's Mbappe going? Mbappe go? is staying Where? at PSG. Oh, what? He's just. Mbappe is not leaving PSG. How come? No, there's no way when Mbappe would leave PSG. It You're not really helping right the speculation. Now. Can I throw another bit of speculation onto the table? Yes. Bang! There it is. Right on the table. Get a good look at it. Yeah? Will Hudson Adoy stay at Chelsea? James Rodriguez. James Rodriguez. James Rodriguez. He's going back to Real because he's asked Bayern Munich not to make his two year loan deal permanent. He is now very much going to be sold by Real Madrid. This is pure speculation. This is pure spe- this, this is what I said, I banged it on the table. Mm. Gareth Bale, where will Gareth Bale end up? Oh. Will he stay at Real Madrid? Will you he say leave? you've written Spurs on this speculation. Actually, it worries me that he could end up at United. Or United. Why wouldn't you like him at United? I guess we don't need him. We need players in midfield and defence. You we can don't need Gareth Bale. No, you don't Bale, need Gareth Bale. Put Bale, Bale back into like a flying left, left back. We're making him a left yeah. back. That's what United have come to. Can I throw another massive bit of speculation is, is onto Swansea the table? Swansea to United? No. Nope, All I, of Swansea? No. Nope. Bang! There are rumours that Edinson Cavani 
is going to Atletico. Pure speculation is on the table, but mm. there's talk that Cavani, our beloved Cavani, is leaving PSG this summer and he's going to Atletico mm. and Diego Costa will be leaving Atletico. Where will Diego Costa end up? Do you know what? If they just did a straight swap of clubs, it yeah. wouldn't surprise me there. Yeah. Diego Costa at PSG. All right. One more bit of speculation then before we finish. Go on. Kalidu Koulibaly. Yeah. How much would you pay? Uh, 130 million. You pay 130 million to yeah. have him to replace yeah. Phil, Phil Smalley. What about 84 mil? A cool 84 mil. That's an absolute bargain. If Virgil van Dijk is worth what he's worth, I've said this many a time, I believe that Virgil van Dijk has had one of the best seasons I've ever seen as a defender. But as a How many dribbles? footballer, to footballer perspective, I think Koulibaly's a better defender than him. I would suggest that Koulibaly is, or Koulibaly, mm. is worth 100 million, if not more. No more? That's, that's, that's is that it? it? Yeah, I can bore you with, with, with specifics, but it's just it's just going to be speculation. Mate, no, it's speculation. Right, more of that next week. Right, is that my favourite time of the week, this week, where we go out there into the listeners' world instead of the podcast world that we live in um, and find out what they've been saying about us. Mm. Find out what they've been saying. Mm. This is feedback. Feedback. Francis Jeffers has been on. He says, Spurs were robbed, never a penalty, ruined my weekend, ended up in Ikea with the missus picking up drapes. Akin Fayev has been in, in uh, Igor. He's been in touch. He says, safe, sound goalkeeper's union so I think that was for you do you, say, why do you, you say we're a safe pair of hands Luis Boate says Boatastic I want to get in touch you know, send us a tweet man I think that's like man like Elton John and Poch is working miracles best manager we've had since Harry but you know are we supposed to compete on all these fronts it's only a matter of time before others it's going to take over so just need the investment I don't know about you that's it I'm done Oh, well, that answers my question. You're done. I'm done. You're done. Right. Yeah. We're done this Sky week. Army. Thank you very much. I want to go to go. Um, thank you very much for listening. Yep. Don't forget to go watch us on YouTube. Don't forget to go subscribe. Don't forget to tell your friends, tell your relatives, tell your neighbours, your dogs, everything. Yeah. Just tell everyone to listen to the to a touchline. Well, you don't have to. Podcast. You don't want to be no, that forceful. I, I am being yeah, that forceful. You, no, I'm you, being that only forceful. If you, only if you. I demand to it everyone who's listening to this I mean, podcast. You don't have to. You, don't have to, you so. definitely do have to. You don't, don't listen to, to him. It's fine. You have to. Tell everyone. Don't worry, don't worry about. Tell it. everyone. Right, we're leaving it there. Bye. Tell everyone. Huge.